What's up guys and welcome to the first episode of the John Boat series where I travel the Tennessee River from eastern northern Alabama all the way to the west side in search of the big bass that we all hope to catch. Guys, my name's Cooper uh, and we're out here on Lake Gunnersville today. I'm actually in a no wake zone. I'm going to the first spot. I had to get out of the wind because uh, it's awful windy today, but one of the things that I'm trying to do in this series is guys break down these big, huge, scary lakes uh, and catch fish out of a John boat. So I've identified a creek. Uh, or really like a like a flat bay area and uh, that's where I'm gonna be fishing today main key today is gonna be grass we're gonna be grass 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 because we're up in the shallows so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be up in the hydrilla and the eel grass uh, swimming a jig uh, go ahead and throw some chatter baits uh, maybe a wacky worm around the edges maybe some topwater frogs or something and that's the way we're gonna catch them today let's see what happens all right we have arrived to the grass start off with a popping frog one of the first things i'm noticing when i when i pulled up here and, and i've kind of floated in here as you can see i haven't even dropped the trolling motor yet one of the things that i'm noticing is a bunch of brim popping and i can hear it um, so i'm going to walk this frog it's a popping frog it's a six cents vega frog i'm going to kind of walk it through the the weeds here and see if I can't get one to bite it. Oh, got it, got it. Oh, he's hung in the grass. Come on, baby. Oh, yes. Dude, in the pads, man. Oh, he's got a lot of grass on it. Let's go, baby. First fish in the grass. Let's go, guys. First fish of the day. First fish of the John Boat series. What a beautiful fish it is. Guys, check that bad boy out. He only goes about a pound. But look at that specimen. Caught him on the six cents Vega frog. Ax absolutely pegged him. Guys, look, this is what we're fishing. See this? This is eel grass. And then I've got, there's pads everywhere. And then there's some, even some hydrilla mixed in. And this is what you can find in there. Just a stud. So there she is. That's the first one of the day, guys. We just got started. It was like my 10th cast. Uh, and so we're gonna let this bad boy go. Let's go, baby. Nothing like catching one on like the 10th cast. That really just makes you feel good. That might be my first ever fish in the lily pads too, which makes it even better. Guys, I don't know if it's coming across on the camera, but I can audibly hear in between pickup trucks on the highway, I can actually hear these brim popping. And that allows me to know the forage in this, in this area I know they're eating brim, and that's why I chose the popping frog. 
because I'm trying to imitate the pop that these brim are doing. And I'm just running it. I'm walking it when I can, and I'm kind of flopping it across the pads here. Uh, just making all kinds of ruckus with it that likes it. Oh, got, oh, he got off. Good gum it. He did not, he did not have it all the way. I should have left it. Should have tried my best not to set the hook. He shook the entire pads trying to get to that frog. All right, I believe it's time for spot number two. Spot one, there's a lot of fish. I got a few bites, but not what I was looking for. So uh, we caught the one fish. So we're gonna move on to the next spot. I've got another little cut around the corner and then it's got a couple more cuts with it. Uh, again, just trying to find some, find some good grass. So we'll see what happens around the corner. has really slowed down uh, caught that first fish I'm seeing a bunch of fish jump back in these pads my guess is a lot of bass boats can't even get back this far uh, that's kind of why I'm here but I mean it's I'm in an interesting spot I'm in like five feet of water because I can barely get my push pole to the ground uh, but I but it's all matted with lily pads and hydrilla one thing I noticed is back there where we caught that first fish it was mostly eel and a little bit of hydrilla grass and back here it's mostly hydrilla with a little bit of eel grass so that may be why these fish are back here and i can see them jumping and eating but they're just not eating my frog i don't know kind of stumping me i've never seen anything like that before but we're gonna keep after them after this water break it's been kind of a grind today got a couple bites on the frog only caught the one fish so we'll kind of see what happens after the water break we're gonna get back after it all right water breaks over time to get back to work Time to get some bites. Gotta get them fired up. Oh my gosh. As soon as I stand up, they're freaking jumping again. deep section here. I'm gonna get the bladed jig tumbled up in some grass here. Oh, got him, got him, got him. Come on, baby, get in the boat. Let's go. Caught him on the chatterbait. Finally. Oh man. Oh man. This is such a morale boost right here, dude. It's been a very long day, but this buddy is what we're after. Second fish of the day. Not a lunker by any means, but he'll get the job done. Got him on the Z-Man jackhammer. Just right out in submerged grass. Uh, I've got grass below me. It's probably about 10 feet, but the grass is probably two feet. So I'm just basically skimming it right on top of the water. And this is what I get. I, I missed a fish earlier too. So that was two bites on the chatterbait. It may be that that's the deal. I spent way too much time on the frog today. I really believed in it after the beginning. It didn't seem to pan out. So we're gonna, we're gonna run this chatterbait deal for a little while longer and uh, see what happens. All right guys, since the action's been kind of slow today, I wanted to go ahead and mention uh, what, what we're catching them on today. So this is a Z-Man jackhammer uh, chatterbait. It's one of the stealth ones with the, got a clear bill on it. Uh, and I've got a raised tail, just like a, like a little tail on the back of it. Uh, the crawls work better on the raised tails for this, uh, but I wanted a, a smaller profile because uh, I, I was ripping through the grass. Um, 
what I was doing was I was f fishing submerged grass that the tips of it was coming up to be about two or three feet deep. Uh, the actual lake was probably 10 feet deep there. Uh, and that's where the bass are schooling up and staging and, and eating bluegill. And you can, you can see when you're trolling, uh, if you got some polarized sunglasses, you can see the, uh, the beds and everything down in there. There's holes and stuff, and that's where I was stopping it. And uh, that's, where that, that's where I got the one to bite. Uh, I'm throwing it on a 7-foot medium-heavy quantum smoke rod. And I've got a Shimano Corrado reel. Uh, I'm throwing 8 5 to 1 gear ratio. That was probably a little fast for what I was trying to do, but that's okay. It still got the job done. Next one up is the Vega Frog, the Six Sense Vega Frog. Uh, this has been my go-to bait this year, really. Uh, really like the action on it. Uh, I've caught a lot of fish on it today. It wasn't great. I was trying to throw it over pads, and it is a popping frog. I was kind of having some issues with that, but it was the only frog I had in the boat. Uh, and and it did okay. It got the one blow up. It's got a couple more blow ups that that kind of side swiped at it But only one of them really committed on it. We were able to catch that fish uh, I've, I've got a really old Bass Pro Shops Reel here that I'm using. It's a 7 1 to 1. Uh, it's got 65 pound braid on it So you can really winch those fish out of there I recommend always throwing a frog on braid because you never know when that fish is gonna wrap you up in the grass And it's just gonna rip that line to shreds. So uh, I always throw it on. I always throw it on really heavy braid, like 65 pound. And then this is my favorite frogging rod. It's a Dobbins Fury. It's a 7.3 heavy, uh, but it's a frog rod. It's got a really, really strong tip on it. Uh, I really like it to, to winch that those fish out of that grass. Uh, again, working that grass pattern. Uh, so we're gonna keep at it and see what happens from here. Wow, what a tough day. I really struggled today kind of establishing that pattern that we're trying to do in this series. You know, I was fishing the grass and doing a lot of that, but really the bites weren't there. Like I told you earlier, uh, I stuck with the frog too long. I think that when we come back, I need to stick in the grass doing the bladed jig, swim jig type thing. That's the way I think we can catch them. So guys, we got one more day on Gunnersville. Uh, we got one more day to check Gunnersville off the list for the John Boat series. We gotta establish a pattern. We gotta figure it out. We got 24 hours now to figure it out. of the Lake Gunnersville in the John Boat Series. Day one got me, you know? We only caught two fish. I felt like I had to go out here. I had another day to get out here and give it a shot, try to check it off the list. So we're here, we're out here. We went to a different boat ramp today, but still doing the same thing because I think that the submerged grass is the deal. We're still picking up the swim jig. Uh, we're gonna be throwing the chatterbait and then of course the frog today. Uh, so I think it's gonna be a good day. Uh, we got to check Lake Gunnersville off the list though. I mean, it's the last day. It's the last opportunity in the John Boat Series to check Lake Gunnersville off the list. I got a feeling we're going to do it, so stick with us. Stay tuned. Let's get on the water. That right there is what is known as a tight squeeze. If I can get back there though, it's, I think there's gonna be some fish on the other side. Oh yeah. This is how you know you're getting close to catching some fish right here. Dang. Birds everywhere. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. do we have here? Oh yeah.
I bet there's some bigs back here, son. Can't nobody get to them either, but me. Cause I got a John boat. Got one on the frog, baby. I knew going back in this cut would pay off. He's not big by any means, but first fish of the day, baby. Let's go. Oh, that's a fish. Stay on there, baby. It's a decent size one. Come on, baby. Get in the boat. Let's go. Let's go. On the chatterbait. Two pounder, baby. He might even go three. But the key has been this chatterbait. Uh, I'm fishing that submerged grass. I've got a chatterbait and I've got a frog. That's basically what we're working with. That's been the key on this day two of Gunnersville. Uh, we're starting to figure them out. We caught two now. The first one was small. This is the first one a decent size of the John Boat series. So let's keep after it. We'll see what happens because uh, the weather's getting better for the chatterbait bite. So we're gonna keep at it. Oh God, this is a big one. Oh, oh, this is a big one. Oh no, stay on, stay on, stay on, baby, stay on, stay on. Come on, baby. Oh. Just broke my rod. Trying to boat flip a freaking five and a half pounder. I don't know why in the world I tried to do that. I don't even know what to say right now. It's a freaking $200 rod. Six pounder. On a chatterbait, I mean doing the same stuff. I'll just see y'all in the next clip, man. Oh, look. There's the piece of my broken rod right there. Check that out. Look, guys, I tell you what, whoever comments the words, you suck at fishing the most on this video, I'll sign this for you and I'll send it directly to you. So go ahead and drop a comment if you want it. Another big one, another big one, another big one. Oh my gosh, another big one, dude. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's go. Let's go, baby. Oh. 
dude. Swimming a freaking jig again. I just broke my, my rod like three casts ago. Unbelievable. And I still bit on dude. This point is incredible right now. Check that out. That's a freaking that's a freaking four pounder. That's him right there. Look at that, man. That made breaking the rod worth it. Apparently there's a bunch of these on this point. I'm fishing this point. I just broke off a six pounder. This is about a four pounder. Uh, and I did it like three casts. Guys, day two of the, day two of, uh, of Gunnersville is going way better than I expected. After day one, I knew I just had to get back out here uh, and do a little better because I couldn't check Gunnersville off the list. So I went, I went to a different boat ramp today as I already told you guys and, and just fishing the same stuff just in a different area. I, I know this is a productive stretch of water, but never expected anything like this, man. This is crazy, man. Look, one more look at it, baby. Let's go. I'm just fan casting across this point. The point has a shallow bar that comes out and it's just covered with grass. It's in about five foot of water. And the first one I caught on that, the first big one was on that chatterbait I broke off, but I also had a swim jig tied on. So I'm now fishing the swim jig and like three casts later, he freaking smacked it, another big one. I should have weighed that guy. That's a bummer. I'll weigh the next giant I catch. What a range of emotion too. I mean, I'm still upset about that rod, but oh man, I feel a lot better about it now. I just wish I would have landed the fish. Go ahead and like and share this video so I can buy another rod. Seriously, like that was one of the most insane days of fishing in my life like it wasn't because of the numbers it wasn't because of any of that but there's a lot of stuff in this video that i couldn't include because the wind was howling i was there for hours and hours and it all came together right there in those last 30 minutes i didn't think we were going to check gunnersville off the list and once i came out of that little culver i went under it was like 30 minutes of just three pounder after three pounder after three pounder and then we caught those uh that four and then what i thought was a six that i broke off off at the boat there it was just such a wide range of emotions from all day not doing anything productive and then finally finding a productive stretch of water and then breaking the rod off and then coming back again and catching the big one right after that it was just such a crazy day like it's hard to describe one of the things I'm trying to do in this series is to break down these big bodies of water into bite-sized pieces that we can all fathom uh, because it can be hard to go out on these big bodies of water uh, in a John boat and expect to get it done. So I'm trying to break it down into these bite-sized pieces, but today really tested it because I was all over the place at this boat ramp. As far I was running up and down the river trying to find water that wasn't so windy, trying to find clearer water. It was just a struggle. It was a crazy day but it all came together at the end and that's what made it so special so guys i think it's safe to say that we checked gunnersville off the list now it took us two trips because the first one i let i wouldn't let myself off the hook that easy but it took us two trips we got it done check gunnersville off the list we're moving west uh, we got weather and then wilson and then pickwick left to do so guys make sure you stay tuned keep watching the john boat series i appreciate each and every one of y'all and we'll see you on the next one
Can that thing hear me? Probably. I don't know what to say. All right. Wilson Lake, John Boat Series. Got like 15,500 acres of pure gold, smallmouth and largemouth gold. Uh, today we've identified a creek about midway in the river that we put in at. Uh, we're gonna be in the back of the creek fishing a lot of, a lot of grass. Uh, and we've got some points that we're gonna fish some ledges on. So I don't know, it should be a good day. Uh, I'm already seeing a bunch of ticking on the water. Uh, and everything looks good. Everything looks promising. So we gotta, all we gotta do is establish a pattern. We're like four bites away from, from crossing Wilson off the John Boat Series list. So uh, guys, stick with it, stay tuned, and uh, we'll see you on the chesty. All right. All right, so I'm gonna get us over there near the grass because that's where the large majority of them are gonna be. Let's go, baby. That didn't take long. Got him on the old wacky rig, flipping a dock. First cast. I'd say today's gonna be a good day. Probably gonna catch a bunch of these, but even still, I think we're gonna check Wilson off the list today. I just got a feeling. And that right there is how it's done. Flipping the old wacky worm up under a dock. Uh, it's got me feeling good because I know if that's working we can do volume we can catch a bunch of volume doing this we certainly can't catch any big fish but we got to catch the volume and then we'll go head swinging everybody else is good at that that's why they're better at fishing than me Come on, I'm not catching any of these jumping around. Got another one, baby. This one's a giant. <sighs> Let's go, same size, second cast under this dock, another giant. They're gonna get bigger. We're gonna start throwing the big fish baits here in a minute. But for now, we gotta get the volume, baby. Gotta get the day off started right. What this is, is like, I'm on the on deck circle right now. I'm getting warmed up for the big leagues. There's one. Another small one. Ooh. Uh oh. Somebody put on the uh, grocery list, put pliers on there. Somebody remind me to do that. Drop a comment. How are these, how are these rusty things taste there, buddy? Had to put him back in the water. He's bleeding everywhere. I used to watch. I to watch Are they entertaining? 
Oh. Oh. There's another one. Well, we've gotten all the tiny ones today. This has been a tough day, struggling to catch anything big. So I've resorted back to the wacky worm just to get some numbers in the boat. We're gonna keep at it. I've got one more point that I'm gonna fish that I think is gonna, has the potential at least to, to yield a big one. It's getting hot. All the wake boats are out. Uh, I'm getting jarred around out here in the wind. So it's been a tough day, but you know, we'll see what happens. Decent one. Oh, it was a small mouth. No, dude. Oh my goodness. That would have been the first small mouth of the John Boat series. Well, we're at the end of John Boat series uh, on Wilson Lake. Uh, today was tough. It was a tough day, it was hot. Uh, we had windy conditions and then we had, didn't have windy conditions. And then the wake boat started coming out. And really the only pattern I could find was a wacky rig on a seawall. I mean, we fished Carolina rigs, we fished swim jigs, we threw the popping frog. Uh, we're fishing this river grass that you could probably see behind me. Uh, just didn't pan out other than the wacky worm. So, you know, we caught, we caught probably 10 fish. A lot of them were tiny. Uh, so nothing of some size, but I told you guys that we could do that all day long and catch a bunch of fish But you know, it's not the same as going and swinging for the fences and that's what we did most of the day uh, Was we were really trying to get that big bite That uh, we just never did so anyway, we we did check it off the list though for the John boat series We did establish a pattern. We caught a bunch of fish. Uh, we tried a new lake So we're gonna check this one off the list. That's two down. We got two more to go and then uh, I might even throw another lake in there uh, at the end, depending on how it goes. So um, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this episode of the John Boat Series. Uh, and let's check Wilson off the list and we'll see you on the next video. Pickwick Lake, one of the most fished lakes on the Tennessee River. And today I get to do it, you guys, on the John Boat Series. Pickwick Lake is one of the ones that I was really excited about when I told you guys I was gonna fish all the way across the state of Alabama on Tennessee River. I was most excited about Pickwick Lake. Nestled in the northwest quadrant of the state, it's got a lot of current and it's very tight, so I was really excited about fishing it. Now, I've also struggled with this lake, especially this year. It's fall time now. The leaves are starting to change. We're starting to get cooler temps at night, which means the lake's starting to turn over a little bit. So what I'm gonna be doing today is trying to fish some of the, uh, up at the dam, a lot of current, a lot of big rocks with little swim baits. And then I, as, as the day goes, I'm gonna push back and kind of fish some other stuff, some bigger rocks with maybe some crankbaits and some jigs. So guys, hopefully they're pulling enough current today. But guys, we're at the ramp. Uh, we're fixing to put in the water and we're gonna get after it. Hopefully today's the day. I'm gonna check Pickwick Lake off the list. I'll see you guys on the water. Hello, Alabama. I'm back. Let's go. Let's catch a smallmouth. John Boat Series. Hadn't filmed one of these in a while. It's time to get started. Up at the dam. Drifting, baby. Let's see what happens.
There's one. Oh, there's one. I think this might be. <gasps> oh, it came off. Dead gummy. Got it dialed in though. I got the bite dialed in. Man, that was so subtle. That might have been a smallmouth. I never saw it. It was definitely a bass. Two out of the last three casts, I got hung on a rock and it felt just like that. And this one, of course, ran away from me. Mmm, that was a big one. I say that. I've got no idea if that was a big one. That's just what I want to think. A way of fishing, I'm definitely not accustomed to these little these little swim baits. I'm basically throwing like a crappie jig with a straight tail worm or a straight tail uh, swim bait. Oh God, it's got trucked. Mmm, I think we're in them down here. Oh, there's a big one. Oh, there's a big one. Oh, there's a small mouth. Oh, stay on, baby, stay on. Oh, oh, come on now. Oh, come on now, come on now. Oh, oh no, what is that? It's a dead gun catfish. What? what in the world, dude? Oh my God. Freaking catfish. You're not supposed to be biting that. Good spot. Not a good spot to be in. You're lucky I'm not fishing for catfish right now. Dead gummit. Boy, that'll get the heart flowing in the morning. Good night. Get away from the rocks. I'm gonna have to retie. And I've been I've been getting bit by skipjack pretty much every cast. I thought that's what that was. And then when I felt him, when I felt him tugging, I was like, oh man, this is a, this is a bigger piece than a skipjack. It's one of those things, man, that I can see the smallmouth blowing up. I mean, I can see the brown when they come up, they're eating shad like crazy all around, but it's just hard to get dialed in an area. So once they, once they blow up, it's done. So just trying to be at the right place at the right time, I guess. Oh, there's a small one. Oh, no, is it a catfish again? Golly, what in the world? Sorry guys, I'll back up. No. <laughs> It's Catfish City up here. I know it. <laughs> Are y'all in that tournament? Yeah, well good luck to you. I think if I was up here catfishing, I couldn't do this good. My goodness. I know it. So far, this has not gone as planned. 
uh, the dam was tough. I didn't in a million years expect to catch catfish on a swim bait. Not only one, but three. So that was weird. I was getting bites every cast. Uh, a lot of skipjack. The skipjack are running right now. Obviously the catfish that you guys saw, but no smallmouth. So I needed a change. I've now run down, down river a little bit. See, they did kick the current up. You guys heard probably the dam going when I was up there, uh, which is going to help us. So we're going to be drifting down a ways. Who knows what we're going to, what we're going to do the rest of the day, but it didn't start out good. We still got some time to make it happen. Uh, so stick with us, stay tuned and check it out. There's one. Oh, this is a drum. Dead gummit. It's got to be a drum. Yep. Dead gum drum strikes again. I have caught every fish under the sun except for a bass. Took my craw and everything. Dang, man. Those are fun to catch. But. They're not bass, and they won't score in the tournament, nor will they score in the John Boat Series. There's something big. Oh, <laughs> probably a drum. Yep, another drum. Oh man, oh man. There's a drum for you. Nice and little one. Catching everything but bass, I'm telling you. Oh, goodness gracious. That wasn't even big. I said it was something big. It wasn't even big. Should have known better. Oh me, oh my, oh, I can't catch a fish, but I can dang sure catch a rock. Whoa, what the heck? Oh, that's a smallmouth. Oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Are you joking? And there she is and the gopro just died oh man i was beginning to think this lake didn't have any bass <laughs> i'm joking but this fish i was hung on a rock <laughs> and i pulled it off the rock got it unhung i was reeling it back and this fish bit it so no we haven't established a pattern uh at least not yet but we did catch a fish it's been such a wild day. I've caught everything under the sun except for a bass, skipjack, three catfish, and a drum, and now a smallmouth. Decent size one too, like a two pounder. I got no idea. I got no answers. Here's fish number one. If we catch a couple more, I'll call it a pattern, and we'll check Pickwick Lake off the list. Baby, let's get it. There's a fish. There's a fish. That's a smallmouth. There we go. 
Now we're getting somewhere. Oh, that's what we wanted to see right there. Oh, it's a spotted bass. There we go. Spotted bass, baby. There's fish number two. Caught him on a tiny swim bait. I found a, a couple rock piles right here behind me. Swimming that baby right over the top of it. That's two. If I catch one more, I'm gonna consider it a Pickwick's checked off the list because it's been a grind and I'm finally getting into it. I'm trying some different things, some different tactic. It's been one of those days that just throw the kitchen sink at them. And this is what we got to show for it, baby. So we got a small mouth and a spotted bass and we're not going anywhere. So baby, stay tuned, let's go. Man, I got no words. I got no further words. Only thing left to do now is catch them. On the old baby swimmer. On the baby swimmer. It took me a minute to find the rock pile. But once I did, and that was about the first good cast I got over without getting hung or something. Feeling good still. We got some time. We got some time. I was hoping it was a smallmouth, but spotted bass. And it was small. But hey, on a day like today, you take what you can get. You take anything you can get. There's a fish. Spotted bass again. He don't count though. He definitely doesn't count. Can't believe I wasted a hook set on that guy. Oh man, guys, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that one. We kind of got something going there at the end. You know, we caught those three fish. We actually caught the, when we finally started catching bass and not everything else under the sun, we caught those three bass pretty close to each other so guys i was thinking i was figuring something out we we finished the day down in the drifting zones uh we were down there drifting a jig and eventually that little swim bait uh down there in the current now the small mouth was obviously not a pattern you guys saw got hung up on a rock got it off the rock a little bit and then that thing bit right as i was doing and you you're saying why didn't you start cranking then obviously they're they're chasing in a chasing mood well what you guys probably aren't going to see in this video is i did i did pick up a crankbait at that point a couple casts later ripped it off so got it hung on a rock just like it's supposed to do couldn't get it undone and that was that anyway i picked back up the jib kept going went back and found those rock piles and was swimming that little shiny swimmer over the top of those things and actually was having some success got two bites pretty quick they were both really small spotted bass but i do think you know that could have been considered a pattern i don't know guys i don't know leave it in the comments what you think if we should check pickwick lake off the list Guys, I hope you're enjoying the series. I know it's been a while since we filmed one of these. That's for a multitude of different reasons, mostly being because I've been spending a lot of time on Gunnersville Lake because that's where I've been catching them. And I've already checked Gunnersville off the series, so I can't keep doing Gunnersville Lake. So I realized that. So it's been a while since we filmed one. I hope you're still enjoying these videos. I got a lot of positive responses out of the first couple John Boat Series videos. So I hope this one is the same way. Uh, if you like this series and you want to see more of it, uh, go ahead and like this video. Go ahead and comment. Comment, tell me if I if I pass Pickwick Lake or not and then guys stay tuned for Wheeler Lake the last one on the list is Wheeler uh, so stay tuned for it and guys uh, we'll see you on the next one Wheeler Lake, John Boat Series. Last lake to check off the list now. Pickwick, Wilson, Gunnersville, all checked off the list. And Wheeler is the last one. And honestly, guys, Wheeler is my nemesis. I've never been any good on Wheeler. I don't know how to fish Wheeler. And on top of that, I've tried to film this same John Boat Series on Wheeler Lake. Like, I think this is my third time because I can't ever catch any fish. I filmed it one time and caught some fish, 
but they were all really small. But this is a new day. I'm trying a new tactic. The one thing I haven't done is try to film this video and last two times I did it, it was in the dead of summer. So this is the fall now. The leaves are changing. The bass are moving up shallow and that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm fishing a, basically a bar to my right here. It drops off to about 30 feet. And then where I'm casting is probably two feet. There's one. Oh, there's one. Oh, yeah. There's one. Oh, there we go. I wasn't sure it was possible to catch a fish on Wheeler. But there's number one, baby. Look at that one on the old Whopper Plopper. Now, I fished a tournament on Smith Lake last weekend. And I caught a fish and got a hook so deep in my finger, I didn't think I was going to get it out. So, forgive me if I'm using an abundance of caution here. That's a tiny one. But it'll do as the first fish on Wheeler in the John Boat series. Look at that, baby. Let's put him back in and get some more. Let's go. Of course, I drifted right into the spot. Coming back in here on this creek, right where it comes out, there's two points on either side. Finally got me one on the old Whopper Plopper, on the Jumbo Whopper Plopper. He missed it the first time and got it the second time. It always, it's always good to get that first one out of the way. But as you guys know, in the John Boat series, we got to establish a pattern. And I think the pattern is going to be probably schooling fish. That's why I got the Whopper Plopper on. Or at least, you know, fish that are chasing shad or whatever. So it feels good to get that first bite out of the way. We'll go fish this other point. This other point's got, it comes out longer and it's got wood on it. And then I'm gonna back up and throw like a shaky head on it, probably a crankbait too. Let's see what we can't come up with there. They start schooling on this point, it's gonna be over. I think we're gonna bust them. I've seen them jump twice now. We'll have this rod ready to go. Right here next to me. There he is, there he is. Let's go, off the point. Decent one, decent one, decent one. Not great, but decent, definitely a decent one. Second bite on the point here. Come on now, get in the boat. Let's go, that's a bigger one, dude. Still not huge, but that's definitely a bigger one. All right, guys, there's fish number two. Spotted bass, pretty nice one at that. She'd probably go two pounds. This fish came on the point. I switched to the shaky head with the six cents boosa worm. I think that's what it's called. Love these baits right here. Definitely the best shaky head worm in the market. Fish number two on Wheeler. Wheeler's going a lot better than expected. I've been here for about an hour, already caught two fish. One on the Whopper Plopper, the other one on the shaky head on the point. Guy back, baby. Let's go. Let's go. See you later, little buddy. That's the second bite I got on that point. I missed the first one. Second one I did not miss. So I think there's a lot back there. As I'm speaking though, I think somebody's coming up behind me sitting on that point. Nope, they went on by. So 
let's go, baby. Let's get in there and let's catch another one. If I catch one more, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say we're good. But it's so early, I'm gonna keep fishing. So let's see what happens, baby. Public service announcement: There is fish on Wheeler Lake, believe it or not, and I'm doing it the way I love catching them. Although my drag was tightened way down on that fish. Good thing it wasn't a giant, because I would have not landed him i was fishing i was sitting back on the point kind of fishing out mostly because the wind's blowing in this way and it's hard to keep my boat position and i'm just kind of feeling for the point i don't have my graphs on i'm just kind of feeling for it which in this wind is kind of tough to do but definitely once you get it down there there's a there's like a patch of rocks kind of on the point here most of this bank is just desolate nothing here but there's like a patch of rocks down here off this point that I, that's where that one came off of and that's also where I got bit earlier. I'm just shaking it and I don't feel anything until they bite. Sometimes that's the way you gotta fish in these John boats or, some, or a small bass boat or whatever. When you're trying to cast to a specific location, sometimes you just gotta play the wind and just kinda sit wherever you can sit to make the same cast every time. I like to point the boat into the wind that way when I'm trolling, I'm trolling into the wind and it kind of keeps me stagnant. But sometimes, you know, they say Tennessee River is really heavily dependent upon current. Uh, so, they, you know, I like to get down current and throw up when I'm fishing something like this, but you can only really do that in a big bass boat. So, and since this is the John boat series, mostly because I don't have a bass boat, this is the way we got to do it. And all of you back home, you know, this is an example of kind of how you can fish and maybe if you, maybe you only got a John boat, you know. A lot of these creeks are kind of near boat ramps too, which is a good thing. And so you can actually find them on these points, especially in the fall time, they really stage up on these points. Alright guys, second spot didn't pan out either. I kind of got out of the wind a little bit to kind of film this because the wind's blowing really hard uh, out of the west, which is awful uh, as far as running a boat on this lake. But I'm back up kind of in a creek. I'm going to try a couple of these little cuts, I think. Kind of throwing a whopper plopper and stuff. It's got some grass down through here. You know, I felt good about the morning. The morning went really well, but that was before the wind picked up. Caught a couple fish, missed another one on a shaky head. Kind of a here and there kind of a day so far. Uh, even if it means we got to go to a different boat ramp, we may do that, uh, pull out and go. There's no rule in the John boat series about picking your boat up and taking it to a different boat ramp as long as it's on the same lake. Uh, we're back in this creek. We're going we're gonna to fish it out. We're going to fish a couple more creeks down the way. Key is we're looking for submerged grass, kind of fishing uh, whopper plopper over the top or like a buzz bait or something. And that's kind of what we've been doing. So that's what we're going to do here. So y'all stay tuned. All right, guys, spots like two, three, and four didn't really pan out. Hadn't caught a fish since this morning. Guys, you guys saw the first two fish of the day. That was right after daylight. It's about noon now. Still hadn't gotten anything else. What's coming next is going to be part two of Wheeler Lake because I don't think we're done yet. I don't think we're done. We're about to take the boat out of the water, drop the boat in another part of the lake, and I will see you guys there. guys part two john boat series on wheeler lake we're idling out of the marina now uh, we just went around and put in a different boat ramp uh, so we're gonna fish this into the lake kind of see what happens it is still really windy and it's also a lot colder uh, and raining so it's kind of misting rain right now and it's blowing probably 10 or 15 maybe even 20 gusts of 25 or so today uh, we're about to get on the main lake and really we're gonna see the wind then but right now we're in the marina we're idling out as you can see behind me we got the port of john going uh, hopefully there's a lot of current today the wind is blowing directly into the current which means it's going to be like an ocean hopefully we're going to catch a couple more in part two and go ahead and seal the victory but we're on the we're on the doorstep right now of completing the John boat series. So guys, stick with it, stay tuned. Uh, we're gonna go on a very cold, long boat ride right now, and I will see you guys at the first spot.
There's one. There's one. There's one. Came right off of that bluff wall. There we go. There we go. There. Ate it right off of the, I mean, literally right off of that bluff wall. As soon as it hit the, hit the water. There we go. There's another little dinker. Maybe 12 inches. I don't know. May not be, honest. Guys, this one came off the bluff wall. We've been fishing a jig. Uh, got bit on it probably third cast or so. So feeling good. Got to put this guy back and uh, hope for a lot more. There he is. Let's go. What is that? There we go, dude. Flipping these big, whatever these are, another dinker. We showed up. It's just about every spot we went to today we caught a fish. It's just the size is the problem. It's, the size is not what we're looking for. Basically out here just fighting the wind. A lot of everything, the, the lake is so low right now. A lot of all the rocks and everything are out of the water. It's hard to find stuff to fish. And you couple that with no current to speak of whatsoever and 20 mile an hour wind, you get basically dinks. Oh, there's a good one. There's a good one. That's a better one. There we go. There we go. Oh, don't go back in. <laughs> World's worst fish landing. There we go. It's a little bit better. It's still a small one. It probably goes 13 inches or so, but it's a spotted bass. I've caught nothing but spots on this end of the lake. I don't know what the deal is, but it's another good one. We've we've trolled down a little ways. We just caught two fish pretty quick. Uh, and this is fish number five or six on Wheeler Lake. So I'm feeling good about checking it off the list. But we're going to keep fishing for a while. We're really getting beat to death with the wind and everything else. But this one just came off a rock bank. As you can see behind me, I'm fishing these big piling things. And then I'm also fishing down this rock bank. And this is what we got to show for it. Two fish pretty quick. So... We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. We've been struggling down through Wheeler Lake. We've struggled Wheeler for miles. Uh, covered two boat ramps. All kinds of different trials and tribulations. A cold front comes through, but we're still getting it done. So guys, we're going to put this one back. Stay tuned for more. All right, guys. That is it. We checked Wheeler off the, off the list. Guys, we caught five or six fish. Uh, if you know me, you know, when I'm struggling to find a bite, when in doubt, throw a jig. And that's what we did today. We, it, was, it was a tough day. We had to go to two different boat ramps. Uh, the wind was howling. We had a cold front moving in and they got to pick up that jig, baby. That's what we did. That's what we did. We caught the fish on a jig. I think every fish, except for the early one on the point with a shaky head and the whopper plopper. Uh, every fish in part two, at least definitely was on a jig so guys i hope you enjoyed the john boat series stick around make sure you got those notification bells turned on because guys i've got a special treat coming for you guys related to the john boat series that i've been working on for a long time i hope you enjoyed it but guys until the next time i really appreciate every one of you guys and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want some more content like this and i will see you down the road